Hey guys, Rich from GunTortureTest.com. Um, last video, I told you to stay tuned for my next video, which the working title was, uh, what was it? Oh, the Walther P22 and why it sucks. I'm not going to call that video this, but I do have to say the Walther P22 does suck. And now I'm going to tell you why. First, some basic information, okay? We see that the gun is clear, okay? The Walther P22 is a 22 long rifle semi-automatic pistol. It's direct blowback, okay? So it's a lot like the high point in that regard. If you remember how I explained the difference between direct blowback operation and recoil operation. Um, it's light. Um, it comes with a threaded barrel. It's, you know, ostensibly it should be a lot of fun to shoot. Um, retails for about $380 new. The reason I even have this gun is because I'm an NFA dealer. You guys know that. And I was looking at either getting a Sig Mosquito or a P22 because of the threaded barrel for me to demonstrate 22 caliber suppressors on for customers. I kind of lucked onto this through one of my customers who got it in a trade deal. Uh, he had no use for it, so he called me up and he asked me if I wanted it. And I said, yeah, great, you know, and, and he gave me a price and I agreed to it. And so he brought it down to me and I bought it. Um, here's where the fun ends the gun wouldn't cycle no matter what I did uh, there's a problem with that you would think for almost four hundred dollars uh, what they're marketing as essentially a plinker wouldn't be a problem cycling but of course the slide is pretty heavy because it's direct blowback as opposed to something along the lines of a Browning Buck Mark um, or a Ruger Mark series gun Mark 2 or Mark 3 where you don't have an entire slide moving, you just have the back part of the slide moving. It's the same principle, it is direct blowback, uh, but there's a lot less slide to move. Buck marks like this one, and this is a beautiful buck mark, and it's for sale by the way, but this is a beautiful buck mark, and this thing will eat anything you feed through it, and it just runs so beautiful. Uh, and the Ruger Mark series guns, the Mark IIs and the Mark Threes, are the same way. They're not finicky on their ammo at all. The problem is, is the Walther is. I took it apart, which is not terribly hard to do. It's not very fun, but it's not hard to do. Um, I looked at everything. I couldn't see where there was a problem. I tried four or five different kinds of ammunition, and uh, and I finally realized that what was happening was the hammer was getting hung up on the bottom side of the slide during the cycling. So what would happen is that on the return cycle, okay, right in about there, okay, that's where it would stop instead of going back into battery and, you know, and doing the way, going the way it was supposed to go. So, uh, I started taking metal off, and that's the problem. For $400, I shouldn't have to take metal off of a plinker to get it to cycle properly. I called... Uh, I called Walther North America, which is a division of Smith & Wesson. Uh, Smith & Wesson doesn't own Walther, and Walther doesn't own Smith & Wesson. Um, but Smith & Wesson has, I guess, exclusive distributor rights to Walther pistols in North America. So, you know, they're based, headquartered at the same place, and, and uh, if you go to Smith & Wesson's website and you're looking for Walther, you can get the phone number there and everything else. And the guy at Walther told me, well, what kind of ammo have you been running? And I told him. And um, he says, well, have you tried CCI mini mags? And I said, well, no, why would I? Um, you know, for a plinker, it's really, that's really expensive ammo for a plinking gun, okay? You know, you're looking at for, you know, for a box of, for a box of 100 of these, uh, retails eight bucks-ish, somewhere in that general area. That's a lot of money as opposed to, you know, depending on where you go, $20, $25 for a brick of 550 of the Remington or, or something like that. And he said, well, the gun was pretty much designed and built around the CCI Mini Mag. It's unacceptable, okay? For $400, if I buy a $400 plinker, um, I want it to cycle properly. It's that simple. The other cure for the cycling issue they told me was to buy what essentially is a Nielsen device. Now for those of you who aren't 
NFA savvy or, or don't know what that is, what a Nielsen device is, is it's a device that by itself will, it's either incorporated into a suppressor or it's a standalone device that increases the back pressure. It takes and it reroutes some of the expanding gases from the, from the bullet, okay, to push the slide back and aid in cycling. And those are 40 or $50 items. So in order to get this to cycle properly with, with, any, am, with any ammunition, you know, high velocity or lower velocity or whatever, um, they want you to spend another 40 or $50 on top of the 380 or $390 that the Walther costs to get it to work. And then you have what essentially is about a, a four inch piece of metal um, sticking out of the front. And that's really, again, we're back to the whole unacceptable thing. So I decided I was going to do some work on this. And what I ended up having to do, and you can kind of see it, you see how the, the hammer here is, is nice and shiny. Um, that's because it's polished. And I also had to take metal off. I ended up taking about a sixteenth of an inch off. That might not sound like a lot, but in gun terms, that's a whole lot of metal. Okay, when you're working with thousands of an inch, um, removing a sixteenth of an inch is a big, big deal. Um, and I would take a thousand off, a thousandth off at a time, polish it up real good, polish the underside of the slide. Um, all the shiny stuff here, that's actually uh, from the factory. It's all black and coated. Um, and then I would try and cycle it again and until it got to the point of where it actually worked right and that ended up being about a sixteenth of an inch off the hammer and I slightly rounded the hammer a little more and uh, everything is polished like prom queen's thighs smooth it's it's retarded how much work I had to put into this uh, all said and done I ended up putting probably somewhere between eight and nine hours of, of labor into this gun to get it to work right and so we're back to the you know the keyword for tonight which is unacceptable if you're gonna spend four hundred dollars on a gun to just go plink with okay you're better off buying a tricked out 1022 or any other number of 22s out there or better yet buy a mark two or a mark three buy a buck mark Hell, buy a Smith & Wesson uh, 22A. Those are great little plinkers. Uh, and they're not finicky on their ammo at all. Now, the upshot to all this is, is that now I can get it. It'll cycle anything I put in it now, okay? Be but the problem is that I had to take metal off the gun to make that work, and that's that's no good. Uh, it will cycle the mini mags just fine. Um, before I started taking metal off, it wouldn't even cycle the mini mags. And that's the, that's the ammo it was built around. Um, Ooh, we got a storm coming in. That's awesome. And it'll cycle the Remington uh, Golden Bullets just fine. It will even cycle subsonics, which is something that the, the Walther rep told me not to expect it ever to do. Um, the, the long and the short of it is, is your $400 is better spent, in my opinion, elsewhere. There's a lot of places on the internet you can go for Walther P22 uh, reviews and they will, uh, you know, the gun gets a lot of bad reviews. It's, uh, and I didn't understand that at first. Of course, the bonus is, is that now I've got a gun that works just perfect. And I can demo my 22 cans on it just fine for customers. And everything is all fine and dandy and hunky-dory. Uh, the downside is, is that I had to put a lot of work into it. If you buy one of these used, just be advised you're gonna to have to put work into it or pay somebody to put work into it um, because it just won't it they just don't cycle right the I think that's it for this you know this is basically there's nothing technical in this video you know it's just kind of an editorial a little rant if you will um, but upcoming videos um, at some point in the next couple weeks, I'm going to do a video on this beautiful little gun. This is the Sky CPX2, second generation, uh, subcompact 9mm, and I love this gun. I am absolutely in love with this gun, and you can expect a very in-depth video, uh, possibly more than one, specifically on this gun.
uh, at some point in the next couple, three weeks, possibly, if I can get around to doing it and get everything done. Um, great little gun, guys. Awesome little gun. And it's $100 less than the P22. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe for more videos. Feel free to leave comments. Uh, I don't really care what the comments are about. If you agree or disagree, it doesn't matter to me. Go ahead and do it. And uh, we'll see you next time. This is Rich from GunTortureTest.com.